Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to be moving right along to AP Chemistry Unit 8, Section 7, which is about the relationship between pH and pKa, especially in acid-base titrations. So let's start by just looking at the titration curve for a strong base added to a weak acid. So once again, we have the volume of base that's been added on the x-axis, and the change in pH is represented on the y-axis. And as you can see, we start out with that pH rising fairly slowly, and then all of a sudden we get to the point where it just shoots up, and then it starts to continue up, not quite as fast, but it goes up uh, fairly, fairly quickly after that as well. So I want you to notice that, just like we said before, the inflection point denotes the equivalence point. Now, even if they didn't tell you, you should be able to tell that this is a strong base weak acid titration. And that's because the equivalence point, that, that inflection point right there, has a pH greater than 7. So that greater than 7 implies that the base is going to predominate. So that's why we say strong base, weak acid in that case. Now, we also learned another point about this uh, graph already. We know that at halfway to the equivalence point, the concentration of the weak acid is equivalent or equal to the concentration of the conjugate base. And because of that, we'll talk about that in our next video, but because of that, at that particular point, the pH of the solution is equal to the pKa, or the negative log of the Ka, of that acid. And so at that point, HA, the, the acid concentration, equals the conjugate base concentration. Now, let's look at what predominates on either side of that halfway point. Because of that, you know, when you have any point before the halfway point, what predominates is the acid. You have more HA more of the weak acid. You only have a little bit of HA. In fact, we can take that to its logical beginning there. At the very beginning of the titration, we haven't added any base at all, have we? So the only thing you have is HA. Now, let's take that to the other side. If you go past the halfway point and before the equivalence point in this, this region right here, what you have is more conjugate base than the acid. So that's what's going to predominate. Once you get to the equivalence point, you just have the weak base there. Now, what's going to predominate after the equivalence point? Well, let's think about it. Notice where the pH is. It's very high. And think about what we're adding to this as well. So because of that, I think it's safe to say that the substance that predominates here is the hydroxide. And so that's what's going to predominate from basically past the equivalence point. Because lots of hydroxide still being added there. That's when you have what's called overshooting your titration. Now, when you are carrying out an acid-base titration, always make sure to use the most appropriate acid-base indicator. And in your chemical closet or your chemical stockroom, there's a good chance that you have several acid-base indicators available to you. There are dozens, if not more, out there on the market. Every acid-base indicator has a specific pH at which it transitions from one color to another. Uh, for example, litmus, which you've heard of before, it transitions around pH 7.0. That means that at pH is below 7.0, it's red. At pH is greater than 7.0, it's blue. Its pKa is 7.0. For methyl orange, it's about 3.4. For phenolphthalein, it's around 9.4. So that transition, that transition pH, that's the pKa. So let's imagine that we're trying to titrate a strong acid with a strong base. Which of the three indicators would you choose? Well, remember, a strong acid and a strong base are going to have an equivalence point right in the middle, right at 7. right? So that means that we're looking at a 
indicator or trying to find an indicator that has a, a pKa of around 7. So litmus is your best choice on that one. Now, what about a weak acid and a strong base? Which indicator would you use then? Well, if you have a strong base and a weak acid, well then the base is going to predominate. And your equivalence point is going to be on the basic side, probably around 9, somewhere in that area. So you'll want a, a, an acid-base indicator that transitions around 9. And so the best choice here is phenylphthalein. That's the one that you'd want to use. So use the pKa of these indicators to determine which indicator to use in a certain titration. Not always going to be the same. Hope you learned something about pH and pKa in this video. If you did, go ahead and slam that like button. I'm Jeremy Krug. In our next video, we're going to move on to uh, Unit 8, Sections 8, 9, and 10, and wrap up this unit by talking about buffer solutions. Hope to see you then.